my lovelies. Hello, this is your girl, Black Star, AKA Karshina J, and it's time to come get some Black History Month. That is right. I have got my wrap, I have got my scarf, I have got my hair protected today because some vampires are coming my way. Guys, welcome to the show. Thank you guys so much for joining us today. Uh, Skits will join us uh, later on as well. We've got a special guest, the one, the only, Rodney Barnes in the house with us. And we are so excited. We're going to bring him in in just a moment. But guys, thank you so much for joining us. As you know, Skits the Sun book one is still in demand on Indiegogo. We're almost to 20K. So guys, we're going to be giving you that Sama trope, another, another physical uh, stretch goal to you when we reach that 20K goal. So get us there. Grab that three book journey. It is three books, three variant storylines, three variant covers with one awesome and crazy adventure. Uh, today I'm also wearing my Dig Tracy uh, shirt. I will lift up for a little bit. Um, I've had this shirt since I was a wee little girl. I love Dick Tracy, love Dick Tracy comics um, back in the day. Uh, my mom, shout out to you mom, hey mom. Uh, I had a Dick Tracy birthday party. It was exciting and fun and this I am still able to wear my Dick Tracy shirt uh, when I was a wee little girl. Um, so don't don't get it twisted. It is faded, but I love the way that it feels, and I just love it. So shout out to me and comment what has been your favorite comic as a kid, um, and do you own those t-shirts? Can you still fit them? This is, you know, sort of the pandemic. You know, people are getting a little bit, you know, a little bit more. Uh, but if you can still fit your old t-shirts, let me know, comment down below. All right, guys, we're gonna get started. What I wanna do, first off, is I want to show Killa Killa Delphia, Killa Killa Delphia. Uh, I've got some of my favorite covers uh, for Killa Delphia, and I'm so excited to show uh, these covers off and if you have not and I, I I don't know where you've been but if you have not picked up Philadelphia uh, either at your local LCS ordered it safely so it can be dropped or shipped off to you uh, there's a little bit of glare uh, I don't know what you've been missing also put incredible ah oh, Quentin that's my boy uh, if you have not uh, grabbed those comics you need to uh, the collected editions will be available uh, in March for uh, the arc story arc number two we also have some other black comics that we want to showcase, Niobe. Uh, I did a uh, sort of a come get some review for Niobe and we really uh, were excited about this. This is issue one. We got some other issues. This is by Stranger Comics. So check that out. Maul has uh, a black uh, central character. Uh, this is by Vault. Uh, that's by Morrissey. What's going on, Morrissey? We've uh, talked uh, on Twitter, on the Twitters. Uh, great story for Maul. Love that. And as well as Stealth. Stealth as well as another Black hero that's also by Image. Uh, and I believe they're going to be turning this into uh, a show, or at least it's in talks. Um, good old Detroit. Um, so shout out to you guys. So make sure that you pick up your uh, Black History Month uh, comics, books, and anything that you can support for uh, Black History Month and every month, really, because you know what? We're here every day, right? It ain't 28 days. It ain't a leap year. It's just, we're here every day. So I hope uh, I support that as well. So guys, we're going to go straight to the show. Skits the Sun, book one. Here we go. Come get some. Let's do it.
and we are bringing in Mr. Rodney Barnes. Welcome to the show. Hello, sir. How are uh -huh. you? I'm okay. That was abrupt. I didn't. I didn't know it was coming that fast. There See, I, I told you I was going to get that Hollywood smile from you. That little uh -huh. oh, what? Do, what you doing? What you doing? Um, what uh, do you have? Any comic shirts? Come on, Rodney. Come on. Do you I have any a, comic shirts? Yeah, I have a bunch of them. Um, I mean, the, the different. Nothing of anything that's like my favorite, like that has the same emotional attachment as your Dick Tracy shirt. But <laughs> I've got a, I've got a few. I've got a few. Okay, all right, and that's good. Yeah. Um, when we went home uh, for Christmas vacation last year, uh, shout out to all my peeps in Duval. You know where that's at. Uh, in Florida, and I was like, oh my gosh, does this shirt still fit? It does still fit. I'm bringing this home, and I loved it. Uh, no mothballs, no holes, just a little bit of fade um, in it, and I think, you know, I took care of myself. My mom made sure that I took care of my, my things, you know, make sure I took care of my clothes, you know what I'm saying? I know exactly what you're saying. <laughs> uh, because I know if I did not, whoop, ah, that was right. That is that is correct. Uh, because I remember one quick story. My mom said, oh, we're going to go to uh, this water park. Uh, yes, that's right. People, black people do swim. That's right. Thank you very much. I uh, went to a water park and my mom's like, okay, listen. Keep your Sunday clothes clean, nice, and I'll take you to the park and we'll have a whole day. Well, I was at my babysitter's um, and unfortunately, the babysitter had a young man with all the cooties uh, and we just started, you know, playing and roughhousing and then he pushed me right before my mom drove up to pick me up and my clothes were just dirty. She said, mm-mm, you ain't going. I was like, it was his fault. She's like, you shouldn't have been pushed. You shouldn't have been pushed. Um, so, you know, it was a hard life. It was a hard life not going to the water park. <laughs> you can go now, though. You can go now, I'm sure. <laughs> I can go now. Uh, and speaking of, uh, and speaking of some other things, uh, I posted up on my Twitter, guys. You can find me uh, there, right there on your screen at come underscore get underscore some underscore two, or you can find me at Kershina J uh, on the Twitters. Um, I posted up uh, some Black History Month facts. And I am so excited about that. Uh, A.L. Lewis, one of the first black millionaires in Jacksonville uh, back in 1901, uh, had his own insurance company uh, and he was able to purchase the land where my alma mater, my school, my college prep school, uh, Stanton uh, in Jacksonville. So he was able to uh, forge the way uh, for a lot of uh, young African-American students going to school as well as the uh, Fernandina Beach, uh, which was sort of a huge, uh, considered black beach uh, for, at the time, Cap Calloway was there. Uh, you had, um, uh, you know, just a lot of big names that was there. Um, and I was able to surf there. So I was like, shout out to you, Mr. Lewis. So I appreciate that for forging the way with your millions. Uh, and speaking of millions, uh, hello, hello. This is a million dollar hit right here. I know it is. I know it is. Come on, come on, Rodney. You can you can head nod. I know I'll you know take it. it. Yeah, I'll take it. I'll take <laughs> it. I, I know them checks are coming. Don't worry, them coins are coming. Uh, I was showing off some of my favorite covers, uh, and I I do feel like after <laughs> I do feel like after the inauguration, this seems to be a little bit more. Uh, more appropriate apropos as to what we're seeing uh, for that. So shout out to you for having that foresight. Um, and I'm really loving this one. It's like actually one of my favorites. It is just raw. It is just, just I don't know, just pure hatred in those eyes. I don't know, can I, I'm getting too much glare, too much glare, uh, but too pure hatred in those eyes. And I love it with the drip of the blood. Um, but for this one, the ending of story arc two. Oh, Rodney, 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 Rodney. Help me, Rodney, help, help me, Rodney. Um, because I told you in the last Come Get Some, 
Uh, I'm part of that Jefferson Sally Hemmings line. And I was like, oh, let me clutch my pearls about Grandma Mama Mom. What is going on, Grandma Mom? Um, what is going on with that, with your story arc number two? Rodney? Uh, yeah, I just wanted to um, expand the world a little bit. Uh, some of the characters within the... Um, John and Abigail Adams' uh, crossings and dealings over time. I felt like uh, Sally Hemings, and uh, was certainly with her association of with Thomas Jefferson, uh, would make a fine addition to the Philadelphia world. Yes, and she surely, surely did. And I, again, I was clutching my pearl, and I was like, oh, Rodney, this is going to be for HBO special. I know it. Oh, I just know it. This is not going to be on the regular networks. Uh, and it's a great storyline to add in that. In that process, are you thinking of ways to think out of the box, or are you just pulling what you feel will uh, motivate the, the, the storyline, the, the arc, and say, you know what, Be, like you said, with the Thomas Jefferson um, familial um, background, this will propel it for maybe another story. Maybe she can have a little backstory on her own type deal, like how she became. Is that something that you, you look forward to when, you, when you're looking for that? Uh, yeah, I mean, I think, if you, I think if you look at the pattern of how the Philadelphia stories um, come to be, uh, you'll see that, you know, virtually every character has had some semblance of a backstory, certainly if they come from the past. And I try mm -hmm. to shine a light on them, even if you forget about them, you know, from issue to issue. Uh, like Toppy had a story about being in Deadwood um, in his time. And uh, Brittany had a story about having been, you know, a slave during the Civil War. And, you know, I, I try to is. explore as much as There's I can. Okay. Yep, that's my girl. <laughs> there she is. That's my girl. <laughs> I try my best to, uh, you know, just dig as deeply as I can to create some semblance of um, mythology beyond. If they're an actual, if they're based on an actual person, I have to create a bridge between what's real and what's, mm -hmm. you know, not real. And then certainly the same thing with characters that uh, I come up with. So in both cases, they each have their own history their own particular backstory that I'd love to be able to explore when the time is right. Uh, I, I enjoy them a lot because I can see them as, um, and, and as you know, in, in the industry world, this is something to be like a spinoff. Uh, this can be sort mm -hmm. of another backstory that they can, uh, you know, have their own, you know, bringing it, you know, to the fold. Uh, and speaking of backstory, hello, Elysium Gardens as well, guys. This is also sort of uh, the mini story that is in the back of Philadelphia. So if you, again, have not gone out to grab Philadelphia, you are missing like a two for one special, a two for. Uh, and I was showing you this one with inks by Bill Sinkevich. What's up, Bill? He follows us on Twitter. Hey, Bill, what's going on? Uh, but yes, uh, what about Bill Sinkevich? Uh, of course, Jason Sean Alexander. What's up, Jay Sean? Uh, he uh, uh, agreed and has completed uh, a cover for our Skits the Sun book two. And we are so excited, um, along with Patrick Reynolds for Skits the Sun book one. So I feel, I feel like I'm the female Rodney Barnes. I've, I've got like Jason Sean. I got Patrick Reynolds, you know, I, I got I got them all. I got my husband, Michael Sigenthaler, which is my Bill Simkevich. Um, So, I mean, you know, what, what's going on here? The counterparts, what's going on here? Yeah, we're, we're crossing streams for sure. <laughs> we are, we are. Um, so, and one of the things that I, I really enjoyed, and guys, I'm just giving you some quick look, look at this. Some 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 great stuff uh, to look at, and again, they're just sneaks because I want you guys to actually go out and grab it. Um, what would you say has been your best issue or their favorite that you felt like I got everything down? I've got everything uh, that I wanted to say in just this one issue. Which one was your favorite? I mean, I think they all, to lesser or greater degrees, um, say what I'm trying to get across. But I think issue eight, um, where Detective Sangster is in the netherworld searching for his wife, um, mm -hmm. that book sort of hit a tone that I was trying to strike between 
the grounded Philadelphia world of vampires and being able to create this bridge to, to doing different types of stories. Um, I'm a big fan of Sandman and Swamp Thing and Constantine yeah. and that vertical world that uh, DC used to highlight. And, um, you know, I wanted to be able to play in that kind of realm with Philadelphia from time to time when it's appropriate to be able to um, say more about the human condition and more to give the character someplace else to go. I've, I've said before that, you know, when I was a kid, vampires really just came out to, to drink blood. That was that was it. And there were a few hints to loneliness or uh, other attributes, but I wanted to be able to say more with these vampires and more with their souls and more of what mm -hmm. the state of being undead is. And I think issue eight was a big step in that direction for me. Nice, very nice. Uh, we are gonna say hello to the chat. Uh, and we're gonna bring in Skit's comments in about a couple of minutes. So I hope he's ready in the background. Producers, are you ready? Are you ready? Uh, so we're gonna say hello to the chat. Of course, Skit says Rodney is here. Thank you very much, honey. Uh, Mandible Smasher, hello. Skit's comic, hello. Rodney Barnes. Oh, hey. Uh, Switchblade Kitty uh, out in LA uh, says, I'm ready for some come get some. Uh, you know, and it's funny because I've had a lot of people say, you know what, I'm doing the most exercise when I'm doing you this. <laughs> That's about all I can do. You, you, you get, you've done more cardio in the past 15 minutes than I've done in the last seven months, <laughs> for sure. It's all, it's all good. It's all good. I, I posted up uh, something that my mom and I used to do uh, over the holiday break. It's up uh, walking with Leslie Sansone. Walking with Leslie. She's like, if you're feeling bad, if you're feeling blue, come on, you can do it. Uh, so I've got that energy. And of course, I'm just yes, a ball you of do. energy. Yes, I'm you are. If, if I had 10% of your energy, my life would be completely different. <laughs> I am giving it. I am giving it. Uh, we also have sketch therapy. Uh, uh, sorry, sketch. He goes, I would share this out, but all my accounts were canceled, but I did give a like. Uh, well, thank you very much. I mean, <laughs> we like that. Uh, we like that a lot. And we really appreciate everybody uh, in the chat. Thank you so very much. And if you guys have any questions for us and for Rodney, let me know. Uh, Mandible Smasher does have one. Uh, where is this question? Uh, da, 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 da. Uh, what, what question? Oh, oh, oh. Mandible Smasher said, what was the inspiration for Philadelphia? Um, I wanted to tell a story uh, about how the past and the present are connected to one another. And I also wanted to tell a story about trauma and how, you know, oftentimes the past, uh, you know, people are haunted by their childhoods. That's sort of a staple in therapy, uh, at least in the Freudian sense. Mm -hmm. And uh, in the, how best to go about telling that story, you know, vampires are one of the few monsters that have the ability to, um, you know, go through time, but they still sort of have a connective tissue to who they were as human beings. Uh, zombies are zombies. They're kind of mindless. Uh, Frankenstein is who he is. Mummy, you know, they're all sort of one dimensional in their uh, their abilities to uh, to do what they do. The right. vampires sort of have a consciousness. They're still linked to some semblance of who they were. And so I felt like um, to add all of those elements into a city where it's deeply rooted in the idea of America and patriotism, but yet still has a lot of sociological um, issues, you know, high homicide and crime rate, exactly. um, rates of poverty, blah, blah, blah. And so as far as a stew, if you were putting all the elements into a pot, Philadelphia is what you come up with. And it's heavy. If you really look at the surface of it, you're like, okay, great. It's a new uh, form, a new way that we can look at vampires, you know, and look at, you know, the ideal of, you know, what's blood sucking in your life. You know, what, what is it that is causing that? But it, like you said, it has some deep undertones where it, it has a lot of uh, politics. It has, I mean, obviously you got the, the characters of the presidents and, you know, past and present. And then you've got uh, the dynamic of the female uh overtaking with her power as well um and then you also have that dynamic of just living uh day to day like you know uh, going through um 
finding your own. Uh, of course, uh, Sangsta Jr., you know, he's in the shadow. His dad was a detective. Now he's a detective, but he never really had that sort of uh, connection um, because of their background. It was more like, hey, yeah, that's my son, but I got stuff to do. I got a job to do. And now he's finding out, um, you know, he's doing the same thing. Oh, no, I got to find, you know, who did it? Like a, the butler, who done it? You know, uh, and, and, it's, and it's weighing on him without the family uh, sort of background. Uh, is there any other little tidbits as far as when we can see uh, Elysium Gardens come through? Will there be flashbacks wow. in the arc to bring the 60s a culmination of that? You'll see them again. Um, I think it's just a matter of timing as far as uh, maybe it'll be in the third arc. Um, but there's a lot already going on. I mean, we, we sort of left issue 12 on a cliffhanger. Yes, you did. Um, I'm mad at you. I'm mad. <laughs> you have a, a lot has to be wrapped up in regards to that. So whether or not it happens in the third arc, uh, it's up to um, Jason's desire to, to write more pages, <laughs> I mean, to draw more pages. Um, <laughs> and, uh, you know, how, how much uh, time we have to actually explore a bunch of stuff. Uh, yes, Jason uh, and his communication skills, even if he's just down the street, you know, you're like, Jason, pick up the phone, pick up the phone, pick up the phone. Um, but when he does, it's amazing work and we're so excited with him. Shout out to you, Jason. Uh, we're going to share uh, Rodney's website, guys, and the description is down below. Uh, we're going to bring in Skits while I do that. Uh, and so that way we're going to bring him in so he can say, hello, Rodney. Uh, and I want him to say what he has to say. But we're going to show Rodney's uh, website, which is at Rodney Barnes, uh, which is RodneyBarnes.com. Uh, and you can go check out that as well as, oh, Rodney, can you talk about uh, Zombie Love Studios real quick, please? Yeah. Uh, please. Zombie, Love, Zombie Love Studios is um, a publishing company that I've created, a studio that will put out Lord Willing three um, books uh, towards the end of this year, all supernatural, all horror um, themed, and uh, really excited about it. It's a lot of work, but uh, hopefully the end product will be worth it. Uh, and, and, and I got to tell you guys, I, I, I love this because it's like horror for the sophisticated, you know, it's like, ooh, it's like mm, kind of highbrow for Zombie Love Studios. Um, and it's showing me some good stuff. Crownsville, uh, is that, that was a book that you did, is that correct? That was a book that I was working on and decided to turn it into a graphic novel. Um, okay. I, I grew up in Annapolis, Maryland, and sort of the boogeyman in the backdrop of uh, my childhood was this mental asylum that was a black mental asylum. And mm -hmm. um, I had a couple of relatives that uh, actually were uh, patients there. And, you know, I saw a study not too long ago that they had done a lot of experiments on the folks, the patients there. And um, so long story short, it's a ghost story. Okay. Uh, think in the vein of The Shining. Yes. Of, uh, where the past comes calling again. Uh, to kind of right wrongs. I see. And are they writing them with a hatchet? <laughs> Can't tell you that part. <laughs> Can't tell you that part. But they're, they're, pretty, um, they're pretty angry. They're pretty angry. Those poltergeists. Um, I I wanna I wanted you to say maybe because I want to put exclusive exclusive because uh, no one else has an exclusive. I want to say you. I want to hear you say. Perhaps with your like, no, perhaps. Perhaps. How's that? Okay, great. Exclusive, uh, guys. Perhaps. I can give you that. I can give you that. <laughs> Good job, Rodney. Good job. And thank you so very much. Skits is going to be joining us in just a moment. Uh, so I'm trying to, I'm like, you know, you know, get your blood back in here, uh, which I love it so much. Uh, and as we're going through a lot of these things, guys, uh, check out RodneyBarnes.com. He has got some great stuff for you to look at, his about, his TV. And as you know, we all know Rodney is famous. So just, just stop playing. You have seen 
one, if not all, of the shows he has written for, uh, helped to bring to life. Uh, and we are so excited for that. And look at the comics as well. We got Philadelphia, Incredible uh, Monarch is something that I'm uh, uh, interested in. This is something that was brand new when I was reading your website. Can you go over Monarch for me, please? Yeah, there are a few um, <clears throat> books coming out of Image uh, that Jason and I are partnering on in you know different ways. I'm writing them all. But mm -hmm. uh, Monarch is a sci-fi story. Um, I guess in the vein of uh, Lord, Lord of the Flies meant War of the Worlds um, in South Central, and they nice. had a baby, that is what it would be. Nice. Yeah. It's, so it's like Black Aliens. I love it. I there love you it. go. Hey, there you go. Let's cut, <laughs> cut through the chase. I should have said that. I should have said Black Aliens. Black Aliens. aliens. Come on. This yeah. is Black History Month. Yeah, you got to sell it, man. It's got to be yeah. like two or three words. Just sell it. Exactly. Yeah. Black uh, Kid Aliens. Black Kid Aliens. Boom. And I love it so much. Because you, you know the process. They want to have a description. They want to have, you know, when you go into the meetings, they like, so Rodney, what really is this? They're Black Aliens. Oh, okay. I got oh, you. Okay. There you go. Right? Right, you're doing your just treatment. Say yes, and the rest is history. Exactly, you're doing a treatment, that and they're like, uh, "So, black aliens?" Yes. <laughs> exactly. And and we've been waiting for that. <laughs> exactly. Uh, and then we also have uh, Nina Hall's nightmare blog. Explain that one, and shout out to you, Patrick Reynolds. That's right. Hello, out there, yeah. Patrick. That's an extension of the Philadelphia world. Um, can't really say completely how she uh, she's connected to uh, our Philadelphia story, but Nita certainly is, um, as are a couple of the other characters in the book. Um, mm -hmm. But it plays a lot like um, Colshack the Night Stalker. It's a uh, it's uh, one of those stories that takes place. It's you know, Nita is a paranormal investigator, and mm -hmm. over the course of each story arc, she's going to solve or not solve a paranormal problem uh, in okay. the city of Baltimore, set in the city of Baltimore, um, and really excited about it. I think Patrick's art is certainly fantastic. It is. Yeah, we, uh, love his work. we we really enjoy his work, and it's really great because I'm already starting to connect the dots. And correct me if I'm wrong, Rodney. I'm gonna scroll down a little bit for Nita. We need an apple bomb. Got it going on. Um, correct me if I'm wrong, but is this sort of the same? Yeah, you're starting to connect dots. I don't know what you, I don't know what you're doing there. It's like uh, I mean, I, I'd hate to keep a secret from you. You start to put the pieces together. It's like it's like an episode of Dateline. I mean, you right, right. I'm yep. gonna take his job too. I'm gonna take yep. his job too. Um, I mean, let's just focus and zoom on that. I mean, there's Tevin right there. Yep. Yeah, uh, yeah, and yeah. there that is. It's, and big, it's coursing the demon. That's yeah. There's a demon. They, just, kind of up, they do look a little bit alike. I mean, <laughs> I'm just gonna, you know, yeah. that's why I put that exclusive down there. Exclusive. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> another exclusive. Another exclusive. Uh, you know, you, you know, your girl does her homework. I got yeah. points from the last time when you I was. Get another girl, you. Uh, you know, yeah. smart actor. Yes, I'm a smart actress. Yes. Uh, and yes, if you're looking for that casting for Nita, what? 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 You got the head wrap. You got the Boom. head wrap. Boom. And, and I got the investigative paranormal glasses. And Patrick just did a great piece of art. He did a commission for me of Kolshak and Nita together. Um, it's on his uh, Instagram page. It's really great. Good. We will it's supposed be to be in the mail on the way to me now, but yes. Yeah. <laughs> Allegedly, right? Allegedly. Allegedly. That's what he uh, told me a couple hours ago. <laughs> this is, that is hilarious. Uh, Rodney, this has been awesome to get those exclusive things, and I really do appreciate it. So, guys, make sure that you go to RodneyBars.com and check out as a force in horror, fantasy, and drama. Did you write that yourself? There's somebody, mm -hmm. you know. I had nothing to do with any of it. <laughs> any of the complimentary things, because I very rarely compliment myself at this stage of life. 
come from other people. I didn't do any of this. I just showed up and wrote some stories. Oh, I hear you. Oh, I hear you. Uh, I am going to put that down so people can read all of the things that you have done, uh, at least for comics so far. And I'm loving some other stuff. Uh, segwaying to uh, what we can get from you film wise. I loved on your Instagram. So please follow him. Mr. I got a new, a new blue check mark. Cha-ching. Um, you were like, this is me trying to write a script. And it was just like, a couple blank pages <laughs> or something like yeah. that. It was, yeah. I mean, that's the process, but can you give uh, sort of a, a backstory as to when you look at that blank page, are you literally staring the words? Are they jumping out in your brain um, to the screen or you literally are waiting for that inspiration? It's according to what it is. I mean, there's some things like when I was writing a Philadelphia pilot, um, I knew it so well that um, that was relatively, I won't say easy, but uh, my level of enthusiasm was kind of high. So every day I look forward to um, attacking that script. Others, like I have a couple that I have to have done by the end of the week and uh, I'm not looking forward to that process. I'm looking for any reason to distract myself. It's, there's a Roots Marathon on the Sundance channel and I've been watching Roots, I've watched Kunta get captured at least. <laughs> Four times so far. Um, <laughs> I've watched the MLK documentary. I've watched anything to distract myself from getting work done. And the funny thing with me is um, I hate emails telling me that uh, I'm late with something. But I, <laughs> when I procrastinate, no doubt they're coming. So you would think that one would say, hey, don't procrastinate, blah, 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 blah. But mm -hmm. I'd rather be mad at the person emailing me telling me that something's overdue than to actually properly just do what needs to be done it's very 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 it's very very difficult oh i hear you so i, I i'm so glad i'm a distraction that my husband tells me i'm a distraction no, to I, everyone yeah, as well, so. a good distraction. A good I, distraction. I, I i appreciate that i appreciate that i have to, I, think, I have to think with you because you 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 know you're sharp so i can't just like lazily <laughs> throw out some stuff because you'll you know you'll smell it out uh, I, I saw some other interviews and I was like, oh no, child, this is not how you do an interview with Rodney Barnes. Oh, no, 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 no. But uh, needless to say, I was like watching and doing my homework because it's all good. Yes, Eric McIntyre, I will post that link uh, in the chat, uh, but the descriptions are down below as well. And of course, like I said, go to rodneybarnes.com. Uh, you can always find Instagram uh, as well. Uh, Alpha Proto, what's going on? I got here later. I'm ready to get some knowledge. A, um, it's also a zombielovestudios.com as well. Yes. So both yes. sites, both things have a website. Yeah. Zombie Love Studios, guys. That's zombielovestudios.com. Check that out. Uh, real quick, Rodney, is there anything you want to? Yeah. yeah. I, was, I, don't know if you I don't know if you covered this earlier because I wasn't listening in. I, I can't hear when I'm in the background helping her out. But so basically, it's like when. You were on our show before. I asked you, I was like, okay, did the comic book help you get the TV deal? And you said, yeah. You were like, bam. That that was like, you know, someone saw it. It got in front of the right people. Now, what are your plans with uh, having the comic book company? I mean, have you been working on this really, really long? Is this something that really, you know, you're trying to build to get it in front of other people to push your your uh, your ideas forward more? Um. The ideas have been there for a long time. The idea of me publishing them is relatively uh, recent. Um, within the last couple of years, I think through the process of Philadelphia and all of the books that are coming through Image, and God bless Image for giving us an opportunity to tell our stories. There were a couple of stories that I wanted to tell in a very specific way, and I wanted to publish in a very specific way. Um, there isn't enough of an infrastructure to do floppies. So I'm going to do a full trade, uh, soft cover and hard cover uh, for the stories. And it, it more of a, I didn't want to be on a deadline in the same way that you have to be when you're working for, you know, the major companies, uh, because I have so much stuff going on that it's tough to integrate comics into a schedule. Um, you know, like I'm doing a Lakers show right now and we're about to start shooting. So I don't know what my day is going to be like. So it's hard to plan. So I wanted to be able to create 
some flexibility. And so as I thought about it more and more, you know, I just came to the conclusion that a publishing company was the best way to go about doing it. And like I said, three books uh, for 2020 for 2021. And then we'll see going forward uh, how the schedule permits. But um, it's exciting. It's fun. Now, is this something that uh, you're only going to be publishing your ideas or are you also looking to bring in other talent to work with you? Coming out of the box, it's just going to be me. Um, I want to get through, um, you know, this is an expensive venture. And it's, uh, it's, He's uh, like, me, find me. <laughs> it, it, it's very tedious as well. Um, so coming out of the box, I want to get those ideas that have sort of haunted me, no pun intended, for a while. I want to get those out there. And then if in success, you know, I'd love to be able to have other people's ideas come to fruition um, or to help them come to fruition. Uh, but we'll see. We'll see. Cool. That's really good uh, because that's a great question because I know a lot of people, you just dropped it on us. One day we were like just scrolling. It was like, Rodney Barnes. And I was like, what? He's got a publishing company. What? I was like, I smelled that in April a long time ago. I knew what was coming there's, up. There's that Dateline thing again. There's that investigative reporter <laughs> thing coming also, to the surface. When you're hot, you got to jump on every opportunity you can, you know? This is true, or at least create them. I mean, uh, my attorney always says you need seven revenue streams when you're in this business, because if you just count on one, it could go away at any moment. So, you know, if you look at my... Uh, my resume, for lack of a better word, you'll see a lot of different types of things. And most of it comes down to, you know, not wanting to be pigeon held or, you know, right. really looking to take advantage of any opportunity that comes my way. And this is another. Yeah. When, when I was in art school, I had an illustrator, a real famous illustrator actually uh, come and visit and talk to us in our business class. And he said, basically, don't ever say no to any opportunity. Any opportunity that comes your way, just say yes, because you never know what that opportunity will lead to. That's the same know? advice I got uh, from some of my acting uh, coaches and uh, even auditions. They were like, uh, can you do? Yes. You, you just say yes, uh, yeah. whether you can or not, and you'll figure it out later. Uh, there was a, a time where someone, uh, a casting director, we were like in a line and he asked the girl, can you dance this style? And she was like, oh no. And I was like, girl, you say yes and you just make it up, you know? He came to me, he was like, can you dance this style? I was like, you watch, you watch, I'll do that. He was like, oh, that's a brand new one. I was like, this is the remix. Yes, this is the remix. And so I got cast from that because I said yes, I did it on the fly and they enjoyed that, what they call put a button on it um, because it was, yes, I said exactly the writer's words, but I put a button on it and then did what I need to do. And that, you know, brought it out to the forefront of, wow, yeah, she, she's doing something. She didn't say no. So it's the same thing for your, your, your drawing. You just say yes. If it's, if it's money and it's opportunity, you go for it. <laughs> that is true. Uh, speaking of money, uh, uh, grab your artwork, oh, honey. We show oh. art. Yeah, we are almost at 20K, guys, for Skits to Sun book one. Commercial. Uh, yeah, this is this is like your WandaVision commercial. Uh, we want to go ahead and show uh, everyone what uh, some of the artwork that Michael <laughs> is doing. And we're really excited to see that for his pencils. Uh, explain quickly the three different styles that we're going to be having. Yeah, so Skits. Skits has three different art styles in it. We got uh, pencils in color. We have inks in color. And then we also have concept art painted style. So that's what you're getting. So this is just a pencil page. Thought we'd show it right quick. Yeah, so we are excited because if yeah. you're not excited, we're not excited. No one is going to be go excited. Back skits. Yes, please make sure that you go and back <laughs> skits the sun book one. Uh, one of the quick things I want to do, because uh, I know our time is limited, I did want to share uh, with uh, people out there who, you know, you can find these little facts. They're everywhere. Uh, but these are at least what we uh, had. 26 little known black history facts you may not have learned in school. And to tell you the truth, a lot of people didn't learn any of these facts in school. And it's sad to say, uh, I was on a Black History Month brain roll uh, growing up uh, in brain school, roll. a brain roll. Okay. You know, it's like like the math brawl or, you know, you have like a history brawl where you bring in two competing high school teams to see who knows all the information. You mean, you know. you mean like football? It was like Jeopardy. 
Thank you. Oh, um, except for it was oh, a black yeah, history month. I, I know, I know. Uh, but a lot of uh, people don't realize there are pictures, there are actual um, facts, there is actual patents and things with these names on them. And if you do a little bit of research, you're able to find like this is Phyllis Wheatley. Uh, there are pictures of Phyllis Wheatley, at least renditions of Phyllis Wheatley, uh, as illustrated by Scipio Moorhead, Moorhead of HCB, uh, HBCU. Uh, so, and there's a lot of things that people don't know. Uh, what are some of the Black History Month facts, Rodney Barnes, that you were maybe astonished or that you didn't know for yourself? What, what are some facts? Mm, um, you know, I think for me, it's always about um, settlements and things in, in America that uh, aren't publicized. There was so much that, um, like when I was in junior high, I remember learning, they said that Marcus Garvey was a crazy man. And mm -hmm. I believed that for a long time. And mm -hmm. when I started to do independent study, I found out that he was uh, he was actually quite the opposite. You know, he had his own shipping company and he had his, um, you know, first transatlantic shipping company, I believe. Yes. And um, I was shocking to me. And I started to, uh, it actually in, uh, motivated me to start to do more independent study and to learn how, you know, a lot of what I had learned in school, I had to unlearn. And also mm -hmm. that a lot had been omitted over yes. time as far as uh, contributions uh, to a myriad of science and um, chemistry, you know, engineering. I mean, there's biology, just so blah, blah, much. a myriad of things. And so, you know, and there's um, every day, there's still things coming to me that, um, you know, uh, I'm surprised I didn't know or I didn't learn. Yeah, uh, and, and that's why I love these tiny, uh, kind of quick facts. Um, and guys, again, follow me on Twitter at Kershina J or at come underscore get underscore some underscore two. I am posting them up and I do this all the time or on Instagram if you are an Insta fan um, at Karshina. And I've been posting up a lot of black, I call them black facts. Nothing but the facts, ma'am. Nothing but the facts uh, about a lot of things uh, that people don't realize. Uh, speaking of like grand granulated sugar. I was like, did you not know the granulation came from a black man? So you would not be able to get your sugar because we're the sweetest people. Cause what, you know, like, like our Dixie crystals. Uh, right. Thank you. Uh, yes. <laughs> yes. Uh, it was that as well. Uh, did you not know William Tucker was the first known black person to be born in the 13 colonies in 1624 in Jamestown, Virginia. These are certain things that you just don't understand uh, or don't, uh, or don't know. Um, and then uh, we have, after graduating from Oberlin College in 1850 with a literary degree, Lucy Stanton became the first black woman in America to earn a four year college degree. That's in 1850. These are some of the things that a lot of people are like, oh, you know, the education of you know African-Americans and this started at this time. It's like, no. It's been going on for generations and generations. Uh, you guys are just now finding out about it, and it's finally coming to the forefront uh, in history, uh, just like uh, my sorority, Sigma Gamma Rho uh, Incorporated. We are going to be celebrating our centennial uh, next year. So we are 99 years old. So, I mean, 100 years and having a Black organization, and of course, our vice president, uh, Kamala Harris, she is uh, Alpha Kappa Alpha uh, Incorporated, and she as well has been in a, a black uh, sorority organization that's well over 100 years. So and, it, uh, these are not within, the first times. But then Cookman College is over 100 years old. Exactly. Exactly. But then Cookman right. College, exactly. So these are some of the things that I really want to promote and to share um, with people to say, hey, you know, this is not just uh, black history. This is the world's history because a lot of these facts um, have touched every gamut, every race, every culture because of the contributions uh, that's been made, uh, which is really good. Uh, I love this one. Dubbed Hip Hop's First Godmother by Billboard singer and music producer Sylvia Robinson produced the first ever commercially successful rap record, Rapper's Delight. That's right, Sylvia. That's right. Uh, and the Sugar Hill Gang. Everyone knows that one. Do, do, do. 
Uh, uh, okay. Well, I'm just, I'm just, I, I know Rodney. I know Rodney. Rod, Rodney's going to join he's in. Gonna he's going to do a hip hop, hippity, hippity, no, hip, hip. No, 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 he's not. No, he's not. <laughs> Uh, and speaking of, in 1940, as we all know, Hattie McDaniel became the first black person to win an Oscar for her supporting role in Gone with the Wind. We also uh, got Hattie Mae. Uh, we have Hattie Mae in the book. Thank you, honey, for that segue. She, she's a Southern girl. She's a Southern girl. And Hattie Mae uh, is my uh, uh, sorority sister from Sigma Gamma Rho Incorporated. So again, we have been doing this for a very long time. Time. So, guys, make sure that you go and check out uh, some of this. I will put this link in the description as well, as well as in the chat. And you can read along a lot of some of these facts that you may or may not know uh, for Black History Month. So that is what we want to do. Uh, Rodney, our time is limited. Is there anything that you want to say before we get out of here? I know you got to go. No, for I'm, I'm good. I'm good. I thank you again for um, your support of Philadelphia and um, and all things. Um, really appreciate it. Jason and I both. Of course. Uh, you got you to do Killer Killer Duffy up. Killer Killer Duffy up. I had someone else on another stream say, oh, that girl that goes Killer Killer Duffy. And I was like, oh, now we're going to have a little rap battle. Now we're going to have you. a little. Yeah. Come on now, Roddy. I... Come on. Yes. Yes. That, that That's you. When I think of that, I think of you. <laughs> Why is that girl messing up my name? Killer, killer, tell me. Uh, exactly. That, that is me. We want to say thank you so much to our special guest, Rodney Barnes. Please go check him out. Uh, check out Killer, Killer, Check out Quinn Credible. Check out all of the awesome things that he has in store. And check out Zombie Love Studios. Uh, yes. And we would love to hear more of what's going on. Guys, we thank you so very much. As you know, Skits is in demand on Indiegogo. Uh, is there anything you want to uh, say before we bow out, baby? Oh, just thank you to Rodney Barnes, man. This is fantastic. You're very welcome. You come on here and talk with us. This yes. is fantastic. We really appreciate it. You're very it. welcome. Uh, I appreciate and, it. Appreciate you guys. Uh, Valentine's Day is coming up. Get your get your little red hots. Get your mm, 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 get them up. Mm, 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 mm. Uh, I will be mm, with my Valentine. Uh, I hope you guys have a Valentine and have a red hot time uh, because uh, I know I will. I love I love me some candy. I, I really. See, it's way too much candy. I, I, no, I, we just finished. We just finished uh, our, uh, our consecration fast uh, for 31 days. Uh, usually that I used to be a member of West Angeles uh, out there in L.A., uh, Bishop Lake. And we do that every year because it helps you with the rest of the year. Uh, but let me just tell you, February is here and it's time for candy. <laughs> it's time for candy. I didn't do that. I ate hamburgers. He, you did. I'm you, sorry, baby. You surely did. Uh, anyway, guys, thank you so very much. We're going to be playing this out uh, so Rodney can get out of here. Uh, thank you very much. Next video. And let's see. Here we go. Sure. Oh, I didn't share it. <laughs> you know what? That's that's just that that's, that's just that those are rookie mistakes. Those those are rookie mistakes. <laughs> No, you're just busy talking, so you can't pay attention to it. That's, That's true. I, I, I'm enthralled you that Rodney Barnes, I, I, I let him get away without throwing his bows. I let I Rodney get away that. without throwing his bows. I appreciate that. <laughs> All right, guys. I got to go. I'll talk to you soon. Bye, Bye, Rodney. Bye-bye.